how I would like to continue on the Trinity as we discussed last time, but constant allusions to these three throughout these audiences will have to suffice. We must continue with the mystery of Jesus' life here on earth so that we can enter into the understanding of the Mass. We had reached the public mission of Jesus, healing, teaching, proclaiming the establishment of the Kingdom of God. He had many disciples who began to follow and believe in Him. He specifically chose twelve men to be apostles, to be especially close to Him, and have a specific sharing in His mission. All of this was leading up to His greatest act of love, the giving up of His very life. To strengthen His apostles before this time of trial, Jesus revealed His glory to three of them. Not only is Jesus manifested as the beloved firstborn Son of the Father, ready to do His will, but Moses and Elijah are seen representing the Law and the Prophets, whose words pointed forward to Jesus, the Word, and the Exodus He was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. To Jerusalem He did go, though He knew that some were seeking to kill Him. It was for this reason he came to this world, to freely lay down his life as a ransom for the sins of the whole world. In Jerusalem, Jesus went to celebrate the Passover with his apostles, as Jews would go every year to re-present the saving mystery of God leading them out of Egypt. But this Passover meal was to be different. It was part of Jesus' single act of total self-gift, beginning with this Last Supper and completing with his ascension and gift of the Holy Spirit. These events, as I will be describing in the next few audiences, seem to us as subsequent events. But God, who dwells outside of time, would see Jesus' whole life, and especially these final events of his earthly life, as the Son's salvific, sacrificial self-offering to the Father that remains for all of eternity. Though these events are in our past, they remain in the eternal now of the Trinity. This final Passover, since it was part of Jesus' saving self-gift, was a transformation of the old covenant between God and man into a new and eternal covenant. At this Last Supper, he established a way in which he could bring about the depths of the union he desires to have with all of us not simply a union of spirit, but even a union that reaches into our physicality, a union of flesh and blood. For this, he instituted two inseparable realities, the priesthood and the Eucharist. These two realities are intertwined into the reality of the sacrifice of the Mass in general and the ordination Mass. Thus, I will elaborate upon them as I go through the Mass itself, in coming audiences. Next time, we will move from the light into sorrow so that we may reach glory. <laughs>